Hello, learners, and welcome to this session of At Home with APS. I'm Mrs. Kraft, and I'm going to be joined very soon by my teaching partner, Miss Abby. We are working today with grades three through five, English language arts. Remember, if you are a rising fifth grader, you're welcome to join in because we may teach you some skills that will be valuable in middle school. Likewise, if you are a rising second grader, jump on in and see if you can do some of the, the words and the work that we are working with today. We're glad you're here. We are in week three of our summer program, so we're excited to have you join us. Remember, when you tune in, if you could come prepared, that would be the best way to do this. That way you're ready to learn, just like in a classroom. So I'm here and I've brought my writing journal with me. Hopefully you have a notebook or something that you can use to keep the writings that we've worked on. So remember mine had the tabs. You can set it up the way that you feel comfortable or that makes you happy. Remember, I want you to have a writing journal that you love to use. So make sure it's something that makes you happy as well as something to write with. Maybe you have a favorite color, maybe you like pencil or pen, whatever it is, make sure that you have that with you when you start our program because that will give you a leg up. Also remember, once we film, our sessions are uploaded onto YouTube after they are completed. So you're able to go back if you've missed something and check it out. All right. Let's get started. We have a whole new world for you this week. We're going to continue our writing, but it's going to be a special kind of writing. And so I wanted to introduce some words to you that you might use in that type of writing. So our first word, remember I like to use pictures. So the first picture I want to show you today is the one we have up here on the board. You can see a young boy and he's on the beach. I kind of wish I was on the beach right now, but he's on the beach and he's putting his foot into some footprints that were made in the sand. It looks like his feet are a lot smaller than the ones in the sand. And you can see they track, right? And then they don't go to the water though, they circle around. So it looks like he's really examining these footprints. Think of a word that might work through this picture. What if he is an inspector and he's looking at the evidence, right? If you're going to solve a mystery, you're going to look for evidence. Say that with me. Evidence. Let's clap that out together. Evidence. Can you spell it with me? E V I M I D E N C E. Remember, our C makes a soft sound because it's next to the vowel E. Evidence. Say that one more time with me. Evidence. Remember, we're going to use our Freyer model that we've been using all along because that helps us put the words into a picture graphic. So I'm going to go ahead and put my word right in the middle. And remember, evidence is something that you can see. It's clues that you can find like our young boy. And so that means that it's a noun because it's a thing, right? Did you get that? So our part of speech for evidence is a noun. So let's keep taking a look at, do you know what we do next? Do you remember? We're gonna look for words that mean the same. And I gave you a couple of clues as we were talking. So we're gonna look at synonyms. 
synonyms are words that mean the same thing. So if you see evidence, you're going to see something clearly. Are we seeing those footprints clearly? We sure are. Hmm. Plainly also means the same as clearly. And then a little bit harder word, apparently. Have you heard your parents or your teacher say that word? Apparently, if you did well on your test, you're probably going to get a good grade. The evidence is that you performed well on the test. And so your report card is going to show a good grade. So that's apparently. So those are words that mean the same. You can put those into our synonym box on your Freyer model. Now let's go to antonyms. Because remember, sometimes when we come up with a definition, it's helpful to have those synonyms the same and the words that mean the opposite to help us come up with a good definition that's in your own words. So antonyms, doubtful. Those footprints do not look doubtful to me, do they? Questionable, hmm, might not be the case. Or debatable, could go one way or the other. But that's not the case when we have clear evidence, which means it's a fact. So given those, the things that mean the same and the things that are the opposite, can you think of a definition for evidence? Let me give you the one that I have. And you can come up with one that's similar or you can use mine. So evidence. And this is really important because we can use evidence to solve a crime, which means we may have had an opinion about that crime, but if we get evidence, that may tell us whether we are right or we are wrong about what we came to, what, what our opinion was. So my definition was tends to prove or disprove something. And I wanted to come up with a little bit of a signal for evidence because sometimes our brains like to do something that makes us remember. So evidence, I have a magnifying glass. Do that with me, evidence. When you hear that word, do that signal. Okay, remember you like to do two words. So we're gonna move on to my next word, show you the picture. Ooh. Can you tell what we're gonna work on this week? <laughs> so I see a lady and she's shining a light on a gentleman who's sitting in a chair. Does that remind you of anything you've seen? Looks like she's asking him questions. Does he look concerned to you? Hmm, it looks like he's pretty cool character to me. So our word, and I'm just gonna show it to you right up here is alibi. Say that with me, alibi. Wow, that's a five letter word and three of those letters are vowels, alibi. So let's think about that word alibi. Have you heard that word before? Maybe you have. I'm gonna go ahead and put it over here. And our part of speech for alibi is again, a noun, because alibi is something that you can give when you have an excuse, right? When somebody says, did you do this? And you say, no, no, I didn't do it. You have an alibi. So an alibi are synonyms, words that meet the same. Could be an excuse, could be an explanation or a defense. If you're in court or if you're in a trial, right, you have a defense. I didn't do it because those are the things that mean the same. What about the antonyms, the opposite? If you don't have an alibi, you might be at fault. You might be guilty or you might get the blame placed on you. So we hope that doesn't happen. We hope you have an alibi. Let me show you my definition. 
And again, you may have one of your own that you like better. Alibi, our noun. Definition is to offer an excuse. I didn't do it because I was in the bathroom, right? You probably have done that in your life, had an alibi. So I'm gonna give you a signal for alibi also. If I have an alibi, that's gonna make me really happy, right? I didn't do it. So if you hear that word alibi, do that with me. Alibi. That means, no, I, I did not, I don't have the blame placed on me because I didn't do it. All right, let's go back and look at our character here. Did he do it? It looks kind of to me, if I look at his face, like he has an alibi. All right, so those two words are going to be really important this week. Remember, evidence and alibi. We're going to be using those as we continue. Hello, learners, and welcome back. I'm joined by teaching partner, Miss Abby. Hi, friends. Miss Abby, how was your weekend? Oh, it was great. I feel like it's warmer outside. There's lots of things going on. How about you? How was your weekend? I had a terrific weekend, but Miss Abby, I wanted to tell you a story about this weekend. Oh, a narrative maybe? Well, no, actually not a narrative, but well, kind of, I guess, because, but it's, it's, it's a nonfiction narrative because it really did happen to Ooh, me. Oh, tell me, tell me. So I was out for a walk with my dogs mm -hmm. because I do that all the time and my dogs love to walk. And we were walking around our neighborhood and I looked over, there's a restaurant, like a pretty big restaurant that, that's just across the street from where I live. Okay. And I looked over as we were walking and I saw a man come running out of the restaurant and a car had driven up he jumped in his car and drove off. Wow. And everybody was pretty stunned. Yeah. We just stared for a minute. You were almost just forming your thoughts together. What happened? I was forming my opinion. I, my opinion would be, I think he left the restaurant without paying for his food. <gasps> so he got his food, ate it, and then when the bill came, he ran out and jumped in a car. Now, remember, I was across the street, mm -hmm. so I was not in the restaurant, oh. but my opinion was that's what happened. See, that's funny because when you were telling me that story, I was forming ideas about what had happened. And what did you think? Oh, I was thinking he had a sudden emergency. Oh. And maybe he... I wasn't there either, but when you were telling me this, I was thinking, oh, maybe he was eating and suddenly got a call. Oh, my wife is having a baby. I have to go. And he paid his bill, and then his friend came to pick him up, and then they drove to the hospital. Mm, I think Miss Abby is giving me some more ideas about what could have happened. I, I didn't even think of that. Or maybe he was eating suddenly got sick and called his best friend and said, please come pick me up. I'm not feeling well, and then had to leave as well. Well, I like those ideas a lot better than thinking he left without paying his bill. Right? So, huh, how would we know? <laughs> Friends, this is a real story that happened to Miss Craft, but she really doesn't know the answer. What we want you to see is that around you, there are mysteries and unknowns all around when you're paying attention. We don't really know what happened to the man. Mm. He was but, gone, I couldn't ask him. No, but what we're doing is we are discussing opinions. Opinions are what we think happened. Mrs. Crabb thinks that the man left the restaurant without paying. However, I was thinking when she was telling me the story, I was forming a different opinion. This is just a small example of how we're using words to express our opinion of what happened. And that leads exactly to our essential question this week. Our essential question, how can I use words to express my opinion? 
opinion is a really important reading and writing standard that we are going to work on all week. We are. All it's week. It's going to be fun. It is going to be fun because we know that kids are programmed with opinions. All of us are, right? I've heard kids say, I don't like broccoli. I've heard other kids say, I do like broccoli or I don't like cats or I do like cats. Mm -hmm. Those are all opinions. What you think is your opinion. Now, why you think that are called your reasons. So this week we are going to go into what are our opinions and what are our reasons? Why do we think that? Why? And because we want to elevate the lessons. Absolutely. This is my favorite part. Evidence. Exactly our vocabulary word of the day. We are going to be looking for facts and details that cannot be argued. Facts and details are what we see in front of us. Right. what we may hear, what we may smell, what we may touch. Those are pieces of evidence. So we're going to be using evidence, reasons to form our opinions. The thing is, our opinions can change. Mine now, did just this morning. Right? When you hear the reasons or the reasoning of others, Sometimes it makes you think, oh, I didn't think about it that way. Mm -hmm. Or if someone gives you evidence that you may not have noticed before, it may make you change your opinion. And that is actually a sign that your brain is open. Let's have some open brains to this Let's week. Let's have then. some open minds. And to practice, we have some mysteries that we are going to focus on all week. We will be reading mysteries, looking at mysteries, and writing about mysteries. These aren't real. These are fictional. But the skills that we're going to be working on this week are really strong skills to be a great reader, writer, and just a citizen as well. And an observer, right? Because we want to go through our life as observant people. That way you naturally wonder about things. Yeah. And then you can try to answer your questions. Definitely. So our opinion, evidence, and reasoning skills are going to suit us, help us. As lifelong learners. As lifelong Absolutely. learners. I love that. All righty. So what do we have now? So we have a mystery that I would like to share with you. And this particular mystery is from a book. It's called Crime and Puzzlement. So this book is has filled with some mysteries that we're going to look at this week. The one that we've chosen today is called the Bland Vi the Van Bliven necklace. The book again is Crime and Puzzlement and it's written by Lawrence Treat. It is illustrated by Leslie Kabarga. And you will see those illustrations are incredibly important. It's published by David Godin, publisher. So let's take a little delve into our first mystery called the Van Bliven Necklace. Dun, dun, dun. So I'm going to read it once for you. It's very short. And then we are going to talk about some of the evidence and clues that we can get from the text. The Van Bliven Necklace. Mrs. Horatio Van Bliven loved caviar and bubble baths and indulged herself accordingly. Part of her hotel room is shown both before and after the disappearance of her $25,000 necklace. Oof. She said she'd locked her door and taken her bubble bath at seven o'clock. And she denied that the phone had rung, although the operator stated that it had. 
the police searched three suspects and their belongings and found nothing. The suspects were Mrs. Van Blyven, Emmy, the pert little chambermaid, and Honoré Schmidt, who had an adjacent room which shared Mrs. Van Blyven's balcony. Who would you arrest for the who would you arrest for the theft? And what do you think happened to the necklace? Is this a real story? This is not a real story, Miss Abby. This is a made-up story, but it really helps us use, start to exercise our thinking muscles, right? Wow. About what could have happened? There's a lot of information right there. There is a lot of information. And so learners, I wanted to help you break down that information by using one of my favorite charts. It's called a high five. Show me five. So we have five fingers, right? And I've labeled our fingers with different things that could have happened. So we have our WH phrases, right? Our who, our what, our when and where, how, we have an H there, and a why. Those are things that are really important when we are forming our opinions, right? And then our evidence kind of helps us answer some of those questions because do you remember what evidence, what's a synonym for evidence? See it into your TV. Did you say fact? If it's real, that's right. That's what our evidence is. So there is a lot written in these three paragraphs. There's a lot written in these three paragraphs. I yes, love this Abby. poster because it will help us kind of understand what was, sometimes I need to reread and rethink how it's posted. I absolutely agree. And remember learners, you could always draw this in your notebooks also to give yourself sort of a graphic. Sometimes pictures help us remember as much as words do. So should we try to break down some of the pieces that happened? Some of the, the things that we actually know about what happened with Mrs. Van Blyven. So let's take a look. What do you think, Miss Abby, is the first thing that's really important that we need? Well, a necklace was taken. A necklace was stolen, an expensive necklace. I feel like that is the big what. Because if the necklace was not stolen, there wouldn't be a crime. So the crime is that the necklace was stolen or it disappeared. Disappeared, that's right. We don't even know for sure that it was stolen. Maybe it was misplaced. It could have been misplaced. I've misplaced things before, but I feel that that is the big what of the crime is where is the necklace? So learners, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the clues that we have. Remember some of those things that we know are true on post-its and I'm going to put those on my hand so that we kind of can keep in our minds the clues that we have. So the what is the necklace? Okay, what else do we know? Well, we know that Mrs. Van Blyven is in a hotel room, which is interesting because she's not at her home, is she? She's in a hotel room. Yeah, that's the where, a hotel room. And it said she had taken a bubble bath at seven mm. o'clock. That's her alibi. Ooh, alibi. <laughs> so when is her hotel room? And approximately seven o'clock. So I'm going to put hotel room and because they've given us a time, we know that it's in the evening. And she took the bubble bath at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. I'm gonna assume that it wasn't seven o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna assume that it was seven o'clock in the evening. Do you yeah, think that's that could have been more clear. Let's say seven o'clock PM, but so we are kind of 
I'm going to go PM on that one. So now I have my where and my when to add to my poster. Hotel room. We don't know where the hotel is, though, do we? And we know that it's at 7 o'clock. All right. Now, because it's a mystery, there are three suspects. I'm going to have you write it in yellow. Okay. Because our opinions, and you'll see we'll use colors to separate different parts of how we share our opinions. I guess the question is, which of the three suspects took the necklace? So I see there's Mrs. Van Blyven. Why would someone take their own necklace? I'm wearing a necklace right now. I That's see you're wearing a necklace. Yeah. Why would I take my own necklace? Hmm, that's a very good question. Maybe you don't want somebody to know you own it. Maybe. Oh, what if you had an insurance policy? So with my car, if someone takes my car, I tell my insurance and they help me get a new car. What if she's not a very honest person and she lied? Ooh, so insurance, explain to me, Ms. Abby, insurance is something that you pay for to protect the things that you have. To protect what you have. So if I took off my necklace and... And it's a very beautiful necklace. Oh, thank you. It is <laughs> definitely not $25,000. But if I took off my necklace and I said, oh, someone stole my necklace, maybe I could get another necklace and then I would have two necklaces. Wow. Okay. Or, that's, a, that's not very honest at all, but it's possible. It is possible. I agree. It's possible. So, so Mrs. Van Bliven is one of the suspects, and she is suspected of taking her own necklace. But the police searched her and found the police nothing did so yes. far. So we're going to put Miss Van Bliven up here. Yes. Because she is maybe the victim, but she might be a suspect also. Definitely. So those terms, victim, means that something happened to her. Suspect means she may have done it. Definitely. Now we have two more suspects. We do. We have Emmy, and she's the chambermaid. What is a chambermaid? That's a good question. I think that's a fancy word for housekeeper. Oh, the person who cleans the hotel rooms. Right. Okay. So Emmy could have taken the necklace because maybe she was cleaning and she saw it, and it was, if it was that expensive, it's probably really sparkly. Definitely. And Emmy thought, ooh, I want to stop being a maid, and I want to wear fancy necklaces. I, I'm not sure. So Emmy definitely had a motive. She had maybe a reason to take it. So did Mrs. Van Blyven. That's right. So we That's have right. two suspects who could have taken the necklace. Mrs. Van Blyven and Emmy, and then... We have a third suspect, and her name is Miss Honoré Schmidt. Now, she, as far as we know, was not in the hotel room, but she shared a balcony. Oh, it Ms. used that word Ivany. adjacent. We are adjacent to each other. That's we are right. next to each other. So she was in the hotel room next door. That's right. And so she shared, so she could have hopped over seen Mrs. Van Blyven, maybe she was wearing the necklace. Oh, and Honoré Schmidt and thought, back to I her. want that necklace. Mm -hmm. oh. Which was pretty smart if she hopped back to her room. They and she hopped over the balcony, broke in, took the necklace, hopped back, and hid it. It's possible. <laughs> wow, I can see how this mystery has a lot of unknown parts. Definitely. Do definitely we have does. more evidence? Do we have more evidence? Like a photo. <laughs> we do. And that's always very important. Do you remember our boy on the beach who's looking at the footprints? So we have evidence from our see from our story that is a picture of the hotel room, not only 
after the crime was committed, and I don't know how they did this, but they took a picture before the crime was committed. Oh, so I see, see here, there's a small A on the top illustration. Oh, I see that, yes. And a B on the bottom illustration. So let's look at some evidence here. I'm going to have a blue sticky note. If you have a blue sticky note, let's start pointing out some evidence that we notice. Oh, I'm noticing notice. there's some broken glass. Ooh. It's not broken in illustration A, uh -huh. but it is broken in illustration B. I see that. What do you think about that evidence? I think that's great. And do we want to say where the glass is or just that it's broken? Yeah. Well, what does that mean to you? So do you see this, learners, that I see glass, but look at the glass is laying outside. The glass is not So it must have inside. been the neighbor. So if the neighbor was standing on the balcony and broke the glass, then the glass would have been inside. That's right. So the glass is on the outside, which means somebody had to push it from inside the hotel room. Wait a minute. Wow, oh, this is getting like a big clue. I put broken glass. But the fact that the broken glass is outside means it must have been broken from standing inside, broken out. So the the suspect had to have been in the hotel room first. But does that eliminate, does that get rid of any of our suspects? Because I'm thinking they all had to be inside the hotel room to get the necklace. True. Let's continue. Let's keep that in mind. So I see broken glass and then I said outside glass. I'll put that over here. What else do you notice? Well, I notice that Miss Van Blyven said she did not talk on the phone. Oh, the operator had called. The operator, right. So I do see the phone up here in red, sort of an old fashioned phone, right? Yes. So I'm looking at that and I see that the phone has a cord that's attached to the wall. Oh, that's how it used to be. That is how it used to be, <laughs> yes, indeed. So that's in our, our A picture. But if we go move down to our, our picture B, I'm seeing the phone with a cord that is no longer connected to the wall. So the old fashioned mm. phones would not <laughs> ring if they're disconnected from the right. wall. Right, so the phone cord is disconnected, which is exactly right. Nobody could call into the room. But does that point to any suspect? What is your reason? Oh, Why is, is that important? Well, maybe if it were Mrs. Van Blyven, she didn't want anybody to call her. So she could say the phone didn't ring. That's what it said in the police report, is that she never heard it ring. Right. But of course she wouldn't hear it ring if she unplugged if it. If she unplugged it. So she may have done that on purpose. However, maybe somebody else disconnected the phone if Emmy was in the room, she may have disconnected so the phone So that nobody cord. could call out for help. Correct. So either Emmy or Honoré could have done that also. They couldn't call out for help. What else do you see, Miss Abby? I notice a difference in time. In illustration A, I'm reading it's just before 7 o'clock. It looks like it's about 6.57. 656, 656, but in illustration B, it looks like it's 720. So about 20, 25 minutes passed. So the time has passed. Is this important evidence? I think that it could be very important. We have what, about 20? Four minutes? Hmm, what could happen in 24 minutes? Sometimes you find evidence that you can't connect why it's important, but I noticed that. So I will write it as evidence. We both agree the time has changed. We mm -hmm. both agree 
the phone cord was disconnected. We both agree that the glass is broken and that the shards of glass are outside, which makes us think it was broken from the inside. Is there more evidence that we feel is really important? I see uh, one piece of evidence that I think is very important that could help us solve this mystery maybe is I see a suitcase and both of this, the locks on the suitcase are closed in the top picture. And in the bottom picture, I see one has been up, which tells me the suitcase may have been opened. Because that's where Mrs. Van Bliven hid her necklace. Mm, that was my thought, Miss That Abby. was your thought too? It was, because that's a very small clue. And maybe she thought no one would notice. And if she opened her suitcase and put the necklace inside, boom. It's almost like if I put my necklace in my purse and I said that my necklace was stolen, would detectives search my purse? Probably not, right? Well, I don't know. But it also could mean that maybe Emmy or Honoré came in and they were searching the suitcase for the necklace and forgot to click it back down. Well, if they were searching, that would make sense because the drawer is open. Yes. The jewelry box. So I'm, I'm not gonna sure what that is. Kind of together, right? Because they're both closed up here. Somebody was searching. It looks like someone was searching. I also see that the plant in illustration A is different from the plant. Like someone was looking in the plant. Someone oh, was looking in the suitcase. Right. Someone was looking in the drawer. Someone was looking. It looks as if someone was searching. They didn't know where the necklace was in the room. And if you are Mrs. Van Bliven, you know where the necklace is. So maybe it was Emmy. Emmy didn't know where the necklace was. So she's searching all over. So I was thinking more, maybe it could be Honoré because Emmy cleaned the room. She may have known where it was. But Honoré was in a different hotel room and just jumped over the balcony and so had to search. So there are signs of searching. This is a really tough idea because the chambermaid knows how to clean up. That's mm, her that's job. Point. Yes. So if she was searching, she probably would have cleaned up after herself. So Covered now her I tracks. think, I keep thinking it's Mrs. Van Bliven because she wants to make it look like someone was searching throughout her hotel room. So there's one more clue that I see that's different from the top picture to the bottom picture, and that's the bed. So it looks like the bed is completely made in the top picture. And we move down to the bottom picture, and I see the blankets are pulled. Oh, like someone was searching in the bed? So that could be relate also to the searching, in which case I would agree that it's not Emmy because she would know to make that bed up. However, sometimes at night, in fancy hotels, you'll have somebody come in and turn down your bedding. Turn down, what does that mean? Turn down means that they they pull back the cover so that you can crawl into bed. It's pretty fancy. Wow. <laughs> so that means it could have been Emmy. So she came in to turn down the bed or to make the bed ready for sleeping. Mm -hmm. Maybe she noticed the necklace, took the necklace, then made it look like someone had broken in and left with the necklace. Right. I'm using all of these reasoning skills. I'm trying to make sense of what happened with our necklace. Wow, we have lots of clues. I think we've gathered. And you notice, learners, that we, we put our clues for the room over here and not on our high five, because we are gonna save these for the actual facts. Definitely. Things that we know. These are all really important, and I believe you have some questions, too, that Absolutely. we can use. So I'm going to move these 
but these are all important pieces of evidence that I want to definitely use in my writing as well. So this may help us get to what's happening in the picture or who dun, 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 took the jewels. So the first question is, which picture shows the room before the theft? That's an easy one to answer. What do you think, Ms. Abby? It was the top one. I hey. believe it was the top one just because that one was, has not been messed up. Number two, was Ms. Van Blyven traveling? I don't know. I, it just said she was staying in a hotel room. I don't know. Do you know the answer she to maybe, that? She was having a staycation. She did have a suitcase, but you can bring a suitcase with you wherever. That's right. Even if you're just staying for one night in the city that you live in. Hmm. That's right. What three objects were apparently searched? And we talked about this, didn't we? It looked like the suitcase was searched, the drawer was searched, the case on top of the drawers, but it also looked like the plant was searched too. That's very true. Did you remember that, learners? You wanna go back and take a quick look? So the suitcase was searched, the drawer was searched, the, it looks like a jewelry case to me, it does. was searched. It looks like the plant was searched and you could even say even the bed was searched. Is Miss Van Blevins' denial of the phone call incriminating? That's, that's got a hard word in it, doesn't it? Kind of doesn't make her sound guilty that she said she didn't hear the phone. And I think it does. I think it makes her sound guilty or it incriminates her. What do you think? I would agree because I think anytime somebody denies something, we tend to question it. Yeah, no, the phone didn't ring. I don't but know. The phone didn't ring because the cord was unplugged. However, if Miss Van Blyven did not unplug the cord, she may not have known that. Right? Because she has an alibi. She was in the bubble bath. She has an alibi. All right. So we answered number five. The pane of glass was broken from the inside. From the inside. inside definitely. Yep. Could Schmidt, Honoré Schmidt, Honoré. Mm -hmm. have entered via the French doors? Could the neighbor have entered wow. through the Can double we doors? Tell that from picture? Ooh. I just noticed a piece of evidence. Do you see how this looks locked? It does. And now it looks oh. unlocked. Ooh. So if Mrs. Van Blyven was in the bubble bath, she probably locked the doors. And then Honoré could not have entered a locked door without breaking the glass, but the glass wasn't broken from the outside. Wow, that was a good notice, Miss Abby. I think she may have eliminated one of our suspects. When you look at the evidence and you have time to kind of think of your reasons, sometimes it makes you change your opinion. I agree. I don't think Mrs. Schmidt is guilty. Hmm. Would Emmy's presence in the room have been incriminating? And again, we have that incriminating word. Because she was there, did that make her guilty? I'm going to go with no, because she helped clean the room. Yes, and hotels maids are supposed to be in the rooms right. because they're supposed to clean up, right? right? So I don't think it's incriminating if Emmy said that she was in the room. I don't think that makes her guilty. Is there evidence that Emmy was in the room? Hmm. Hmm. I think 7 p.m. is an odd time for a maid to come into the room. I think that's very true. I think maids usually come in the morning. So I think unless you ask, I think it's a, a strange time for maids to be in the room unless they're doing something wrong. So this next question is definitely an opinion. Do you think that Emmy broke the pane of glass? I don't think so. You don't think so, but do we have enough facts? We don't. We don't. We don't have so enough Sometimes evidence. we have to take the facts that we have and form that opinion, don't we? Yes. I want to know if Emmy was investigated, what kind of questions they asked. I would love to know that. Is it possible that Mrs. Van Leven's fake the theft 
for the insurance money. Wow, this was Miss Abby's theory. I know, and it's not a very honest person that would no. fake that something has been stolen, but it happens sometimes. I'm so is it possible? Yes, it is I possible. think it is very possible that Mrs. Van Bliven lied that she faked that her necklace was stolen. All right, here's the last two are really important questions. Where would you look for the necklace? Wow. Huh. That, me, that question just makes me think that whoever wrote this thinks the necklace is still in the room. But because the door is unlocked. Right. It makes me think the door was open and the necklace was safely put maybe in a planter outside. Uh, See, now I'm, just, the balcony, right? now I'm just coming up with <laughs> ideas. And the last question, who stole the necklace? That is what we are going to be writing about today. Who stole the necklace? Wow, that's interesting. So we've given you lots of things to think about. And Abby's going to transition to beginning a writing project with you. Definitely. Before I get going, what do you think happened? I wonder if we're on the same page. Do you want me to tell you who I think is guilty? Oh, this isn't working. Sorry. There. Oh, it keeps turning off. Sorry about that. Maybe you can help me. If you click it and I will go for. <laughs> it's a race. Okay, not, sorry friends, we're having a little bit of trouble so with this. So if I were going to guess who is the, who's the person that stole the jewels, I kind of am leaning towards Mrs. Van Blyven. I think that too. Oh, this is so interesting that this isn't working. Alrighty friends, what we need to do is we have our three suspects. Honoré, Emmy, and Mrs. Van Blyven. My opinion is that Mrs. Van Blyven stole the necklace. Well, she took her own necklace, hid it, and then pretended that someone stole it. That's my opinion. If I just stop there, it's not a very strong opinion. It's a little weak. What I need to do to strengthen my opinion is I need to use reasons and evidence. So evidence, we used blue sticky notes. I know that the crime occurred in Mrs. Van Blyven's hotel room at 7 p.m. Those are pieces of evidence. I know that the crime is that the necklace has been reported stolen. That is evidence. Behind me, Mrs. Kraft and I came up with so many pieces of evidence. We noticed that the time had changed the bedding was moved. There was signs of searching. I think that's an important piece of evidence. The suitcase was open because I think that's where Mrs. Van Blyven put her necklace. The phone cord was disconnected, which is, I think, incriminating. I think it makes her look guilty. And the broken glass with shards outside and I forgot, I want to add one more, that the door was unlocked, meaning it wasn't broken. The door was unlocked. I think that's an important piece of evidence. Writers, what's important is that I can organize my ideas. So I have my opinion, but now I want to organize. So I have my writer's notebook and inside I'm going to open to a fresh page. 
This is the same notebook I was using the past two weeks for all my narrative writing. And now I'm moving on to opinion writing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a big opinion. to show that I'm now writing in a new text type. From narrative to opinion. My first case is called the Van Blyven necklace. So I will write the Van Blyven necklace. That is the case that we're working on today. Tomorrow we'll have a new case. How can I use words to express my opinion? Friends, if I just write, Mrs. Van Blyven stole her own necklace, done, case closed. It's a weak opinion. So I wanna be able to use words that strengthen my opinion. I might start with something, thinking about my audience. I want them to hear me. I want them to believe me. I might say, ladies and gentlemen, we have a mystery that I believe I know the answer to. A necklace was reported stolen. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't think it was in fact stolen. Let me tell you why. So to make it a little bit larger, I have to start with my introduction. I have to start with what? Just when the take five, what is the problem here? A necklace was stolen, comma. Or was it? Ladies and gentlemen, after investigating I, Detective Abby, don't think it was stolen at all. I'm gonna use magic headphones to reread what I wrote. A necklace was stolen, or was it? Ladies and gentlemen, after investigating, I, Detective Abby, don't think it was stolen at all. I haven't said who did it. I haven't said what my evidence or facts are, and I need to give my reasoning. So tomorrow, I will show you how I start, but then even more importantly, I'll show you how I organize my pieces of evidence so that by the end of my writing, the readers have to agree with me. Friends, this is gonna be a great skill when you're trying to persuade someone to think like you. How great would that be? It's also a great time to stay open-minded. Pay attention to what's happening around you, to the mysteries that maybe happen in your home or on the streets. Come up with your opinions, and this week we're gonna keep working on how we use words to express our opinions. Thank you so much, learners. We'll see you tomorrow.